Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming, of course, more Pokemon Violet and Scarlet. Today we're talking about shinies because right behind me is one, right there. This little guy is a shiny I got in five minutes. And then you just- Oh my god! That's a fucking shiny gibble. Yeah, Tell me yeah. that's not a shiny oh. gibble. It's yeah. right forest too, so that's an obvious difference. But what about the second one? I got that within 15 minutes. And the third shiny, this Doug Trio, that was within 20 minutes. It works well, exactly. Oh I, I my can... fucking god. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Shiny trio. <laughs> Did you find a third one? Oh my god. This is compared to me spending about six hours to get one via the outbreak method before hitting endgame. So to say the least, this is so much more efficient, so much more effective as a method compared to running that. This method uses a mix of hyper spawning Pokemon in a big area, hitting multiple types of Pokemon in shiny potential and also increasing your shiny odds themselves. Basically, there is a effective and simple way to make sandwiches. Going to a picnic set that you place down and then choosing to make a sandwich is going to open up your default options. But at the bottom right, you can see that we have creative mode. So when I press that, I can use all the ingredients that I've created currently got stored up and can pick from them. Herba Mystica are vital ingredients and you get these from an end game activity. By combining two Herba Mystica of the various types and one ingredient, one core ingredient like ham, you can make yourself a shiny level three sandwich, meaning you are increasing the odds at which you are spawning shinies massively and you're massively increasing your encounter chance with specific types depending on which Herba Mystica you use. Such as if I put in a ham and two salty like I've done here, I've now got an insanely high chance of encountering ground types and shiny types at that. I don't think I can stress to you how insanely effective this is compared to the original outbreak method. What took me six hours the first time using this method took me genuinely five minutes to get my first shiny. To make your shiny sandwiches then, you're going to need Herba Mystica. How do you get these? There are various types. They drop from specific types of Pokemon and they require an endgame activity that's going to be hard to do even if there's multiple of you. Well, the first thing you need to know is how to make your sandwiches most effectively. What are you actually going to need for the type of Pokemon that you care about? This sheet reveals exactly the answers you need to know. It'll show you the exact order at which to make your sandwiches. So in the case of me making that ham sandwich, I needed to use one ham, then use two salty Herba Mystica. If I was after a fairy type, then I would need to use one tomato, then two salty Herba Mysticas. Something you're going to see on the sheet very quickly is the fact that Herba Mysticas are mainly about salt. It's the most important one. You either need two of them or one of them and another type, such as say spicy Herba Mystica or sweet Herba Mystica. These come from specific Pokemon in five star and up raids. But first I'd like to thank and credit the person who found this out, the time is nigh, who was discussing it on the forums. And also a huge thank you to Nanakus for helping them sort of work out the most optimal way to do this. Now you know that you need Herba Mystica and you know they come from the raids that are five star and up. How does this actually work? What advice can I give you to make this easier? Well, first you're going to need to reach the requirement of completing the game. That means having reached the post game, meaning you've done all eight gyms and the post stuff with the Elite Four and the champion of that. You've done the whole of Starfall Street and the ending at the end of that. And you've done all the Titans and the ending at that and got into the creator and complete the storyline there. Then once you're firmly into the new game, into post game, you will be given a new task to go defeat all of the gym leaders a second time in their new hard modes and then complete a tournament at the school. You do not need to do these things to do this. Something that I have thoroughly checked and tested. There's conflicting information about how five stars work and so on, but I can confirm to you from my own experience that I can find five star raids, obviously having done this method, but I have not done any of the gyms or any of that new post game storyline. It is not required. To find five star raids then, what you're going to need to do is open up your map and see all these symbols just like you've been seeing in your original playthrough and you'll need to go to them. Upon reaching one, you're going to now enjoy the RNG system. So I found this raid, I've gone up and checked it, it's a four star, how unlucky for me. So now what I need to do is go to the next nearest raid, this water one for example, and I'll go check if that one's a five star. The optimal way to do this is to do it 
online in a party of four. The reason because of that is everyone has their own raids. So you can have four people doing exactly what I'm doing at the same time. This is what me, uh, Cotton and Josh did. So while I was looking for these five star raids, uh, Josh was looking for them and obviously Cotton was at the same time. If we had a fourth person, they would also be doing that and our odds of finding one would be a lot quicker, you know, a lot more efficient. See, we found another four star. So all I can do is go to the next one and hope that's a five star. Eventually though, you will find one. A five star raid is roughly on average a level 75 pokemon so you need a pokemon group that's going to be strong enough to hang with that and defeat it the six star raids that exist in the game those are harder but they have slightly better drop rates on the herba mystica so if you're able to do those and willing to do them then that's definitely worth doing but it will require the full completion of the second gyms and the school tournament to unlock them and an even stronger higher level group obviously now five star raids can be soloed, but it's extremely hard. I've personally only soloed two after many attempts, and it wasn't until I got a group of four and then ended up playing in a group of three with uh, Cotton and Josh that I really made any progress with this consistently. But it is soloable technically if you're up for the challenge, but I would really recommend you have over level Pokemon. The thing is, as I've said, you need Salty Herba Mystica to do any of this. It's the most important one, and chances are you actually need two of them because that's the recipe you're going for. Fortunately, there is a reason source to check which Pokemon drop Salty Herba Mystica and which Herba Mystica they drop in general. For example, if we have a look at this, we can see that this Raichu does not drop the Salty Herba Mystica, it drops the Sweet Herba Mystica. Or the Arcanine here, it doesn't drop the Salty, it drops the Spicy. So you need to go after Pokemon of the right type to actually get the right thing. For example, if you were to find a Slowbro or even a Cloyster, both of these have the chance to drop the Salty Herba Mystica specifically. This resource we're looking at is on Cerebi.net, under Sky at Violet and under Terra Raid Battles. What this means then is that there's roughly 20 Pokemon that can drop the Salty Herba Mystica, and as that's the one that I was focusing, that's what we were looking for. Every time we found a 5 star that was a Pokemon not relevant to one that would actually have a chance to drop Salty Herba Mystica, we would just ignore it and keep going. And before long, we'd find a Pokemon that was actually a Salty Herba Mystica dropper. Alright, so now you've found a 5 star raid of the correct Pokemon type that's dropping the thing you need, how do you actually beat it? You're going to want a Pokemon that's level 75 or higher ideally and my advice once you get in is to do the defensive buff cheer if you have three people in your party doing that you're going to get a nice defensive buff against whatever you're dealing with then you can reach max attack power buffs at level six through any combination of cheer buffs and self buffs naturally you're only going to want to be using super effective damaging attacks so if it's weak to fire then yeah use fire attacks but at level six attack power buff in any way you can reach that will do more than enough damage to clean for its health and if you've got a whole party doing that it's obviously going to be really effective. Further, it's great to be using moves that will heal you based on your damage or even just heal in general. A great example of that is Serra Ledge and its Bitter Blade ability. That heals for half the damage you deal. And since we're hitting so hard, it's basically a full heal every single time we attack which is incredible. Things like that make this soloable. It just takes a bit of effort and planning. You've defeated your five-star raids of the correct Pokemon type. You've got the Herba Mystica you needed. In my case, that was Salty. Now it's time to actually attempt to farm that Pokemon. The number one thing you need to do before you do anything now is turn off autosave in the settings and perform a hard save. Then you want to make the sandwich of your choice. In my case, I was going for ground Pokemon. I was personally hoping to find a shiny Iron Treads or a Gabite or its evolutions so that I could get a shiny Garchomp in the end. As you can see, I found not one, but two shiny Gibble, which can evolve into exactly that, so I'm very happy. Looking back at the sheet then, what do I need to get myself uh, best encounter chances for ground types and the level three shiny? I need to do one ham, then do two Salty Herba Mystica, which is exactly what I did. Upon completing your sandwich and eating it though, you will have 30 minutes of shiny and high spawn rates of the thing you got. So you want to go to the location of the target Pokemon. At any time, you can check how long your buff lasts by pressing right on the D-pad and you'll see the timer you currently have left. Pokemon have specific spawns, right? Like the ones around me. This set has the potential to spawn in this area. For example, if I wanted to farm Char Cadets, maybe trying to get a shiny one of them, this road right here, just to the left of this town 
of Cortondo. I could use, say, a fire spawning type and then just run up and down this path, spawning many of them. Knowing which Pokemon you're after and where it spawns before you do this is obviously a very good idea. In my case, I was after a specific set and they spawn in the Paradox area, which is a great place to farm Pokemon. Down in Area Zero, there are specific places that the Paradox Pokemon spawn. In my case, I needed to go through the tunnel into the cavern down below. Here I would find my Gabite and I would find my Iron Treads. As you can see as I'm going through, because my encounter chance for that specific type of Pokemon is level 3, it's all I'm seeing. And I'm seeing tons of them just by going through the cavern in a straight line loads of them are spawning. Because I've got really high odds thanks to my shiny sandwich, every single Pokemon that spawns here has a chance to be a shiny. And because I'm spawning so many and I'm just going through and seeing so many, I'm actually sort of rolling those odds, rolling that dice so fast, which is how I'm able to get a shiny within five minutes of doing this. So as you can see, I work my way through the area my target spawns and then re-roll their spawns by moving backwards and forwards between these spots. The best location is going to be a big open area where many spawn at once and a as soon as I identified that the big platforms or the big areas uh, where that is possible, as soon as I identified where those were, I started just re-rolling those by moving out of the range of it so I can no longer see the Pokemon there and then going back in. Yes, that actually re-rolls the Pokemon and has new Pokemon spawn in, which all have the chance of being shiny. So through all of this, I was able to get my first shiny Gabite within five minutes. Then I got myself not two, but three shinies within that 30 minute window. And actually for me, it was about 21 minutes in. It's honestly insane. Best of all, if this somehow goes wrong for you and you don't get the shiny Pokemon that you're after within that 30 minute buff window, well, don't worry because before we even did any of this, I told you to turn off your auto save and perform a hard save. What you can do now is just close the game, reload and reopen it, and you'll load in where you hard saved right before you ever made the sandwich so you can make another and go try again. But there you have it. That is my guide to end game shiny farming and the information that I hope will help you with this process. I was able to learn a lot by looking online, but there was a lot of advice I wish I'd had. For example, the specific Pokemon drop specific Herba Mystica. That would have been nice to know a lot sooner. I wish you good luck with your shiny farming. And if you guys have any further tips and help for people in the comments, then please drop it. You might just help someone out. For now though, I've been Hollow, you've been you. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.